Hello everyone, welcome back to 51 GT3 Racing Academy. In the previous episodes, we explained how to judge the braking point, and talked about trail braking skills, mid-corner phase techniques, and corner exit phase techniques. But in the process of learning these cornering techniques, have you ever thought about the following questions? With such a wide track, why did you choose to take this racing line? What factors influence the choice of racing line? In this episode, let me show you how to choose the perfect racing line. First let's explain what a racing line is. The racing line is an arc drawn by a curve according to the geometric center, also known as the geometric racing line. The geometric racing line is the fastest when only considering going through a single corner. The four main sections of a racing line are the braking point, corner entry point, apex, and the exit point. Corresponding to five stages of cornering are full braking, trail braking, cornering, increased throttle, and full throttle. Imagine that if the car runs completely against the line on the inside of the track, although the cornering route is relatively short, the turning radius will be very small, and the car will go through the corner at a slower speed. On the other hand, if the car runs completely against the line on the outside of the track, it will have a slightly larger turning radius, a higher cornering speed than the inside line, but a longer cornering distance. Along the geometric racing line, the car maximizes turning radius and cornering speed, and reduces cornering distance compared to the innermost and outermost lanes. So since the geometric racing line goes the fastest through corners, is it possible to pursue the geometric racing line for each corner, so that the car can make the fastest lap? The answer is negative. There are three basic factors that will affect the choosing of racing lines. First, the racing line is determined by the type of corner. The first type is the low speed corner, which has a large turning angles and a short track length. The geometric racing line of low speed corners is to cut through the apex and take the shortest distance to enter and exit the corner. Comparing to pursue of a regular geometric racing line like that, we then can choose a later braking point, later corner entry point, and later apex. In this way, the turning radius of the first half of the corner is smaller, but the turning radius of the second half will be larger. The corresponding cornering phase is shortened, and the increased throttle and full throttle phase will be earlier. By choosing this route, you lose some mid-corner speed, but the exit speed will be higher. Then there are the high-speed corner, which has a smaller turning angle and a longer track length. On a track with such a long distance and a small turning angle, we must pursue a racing line with the highest possible speed in the mid-corner. Here we need to choose the geometric racing line to pass the high-speed corner and let the car take the shortest cornering route. The corresponding cornering phase is shortened, and the increased throttle and full throttle phases will be earlier. By choosing this route the car will have a higher mid-corner speed, which can bring up a higher exit speed around. Compared to the geometric racing line, if we choose a later corner entry and later apex, the corresponding increased throttle and full throttle phases will be later. By choosing such a racing line, while the car is fast prior to the corner entry point, it also loses more of its mid-corner and exit speed. Second, the racing line is determined by the type of track after the corner exit. If the corner is followed by a straight, the straight speed is usually higher and the distance is longer. The same geometric racing line, while the fastest through the corner, is not the most efficient for the straight ahead. Comparing the geometric racing lines again, we can choose a later entry point and later apex to get out of the larger turning radius in the second half of the corner. The corresponding trailing braking phase is shortened, and the increased throttle and full throttle phases will be earlier. Taking this route, the car loses some mid-corner speed, but the exit speed will be faster. However, if the corner is connected to another corner, and the second corner is connected to a long straight, the car speed in the first two consecutive corners will be relatively low, but the speed will need to be as high as possible when exiting the final corner. If you continue to use the geometric racing line, the car's exit speed and exit point will not be in the optimal state for the corner after. Therefore, the racing line of the current corner must be used well to prepare it for the next corner. In this corner, we can choose a later apex, and put the next apex as the focus of the corner exit. By choosing this racing line, the car will have an earlier stage of throttle increase and will be in a better exit position for the next corner. The similar continuous corners are called combination corners, this situation is more complicated. In the future, we will explain in the advanced tutorial the selection of racing lines and cornering techniques for combined corners. Third, the racing line is determined by the type of racing car. Generally speaking, the front-drive small horsepower racing car has the engine and driving wheels in front, and its acceleration ability is weak. So for these cars, we have to pay special attention to reducing the speed loss in the corners. 
this type of car should choose the geometric racing line to get the maximum turning radius. This route is chosen to allow the car to lose as little speed as possible in the corners. If you pursue a later entry point and later apex, the car will need to slow down more in the corner. Such a line will waste more time to accelerate for a small horsepower front drive car with weak acceleration performance, which is not conducive to lap times. On the other hand, rear drive high horsepower racing cars, with the engine and drive wheels behind, generally have stronger acceleration capabilities. We must take advantage of its strong acceleration performance. For this kind of car, we will pursue a later entry point and later apex. Under this racing line, the car will enter the full throttle stage earlier, and it can take advantage of its fast acceleration and regain the lap time. That's all for today's episode. If you want to learn more about the technology of racing cars, let us know in the comments section. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.